Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nagan nang hapon. Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the 27 International Collaborative Lecture Series with the proposed topic Data Analytic for the Cyber Security. This event is organized in collaboration between Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya and the University of Minnesota. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Alan De Alexander, and I'm your host for today. In this beautiful moment, I would like to welcome Mr. Dr. Randy F. Ardena, MSc. Program head, Bachelor of Computer Science. Mr. Meljon V. Abordi, MSCS. Program Head, Bachelor of Computer Science. Mr. Ahmad Fatoro, GSA MMSI. Program Head, Bachelor of Informatics. Mr. Dr. Ajit Yunisa Pratama as our uh, moderator. And welcome to our dean, Dr. Tias Tutilis Srilastari, SSCMM. From Faculty of Computer Science, Universitas Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya, and our main speaker in this seminar, Mr. Harrison Subakti, PhD. And I would like to welcome to all of the audience who has come to this event. Ladies and gentlemen, on, it, on this nice occasion, let me deliver structure of the event today as follows. First, the opening by listening the national anthem of Indonesia, followed by the Philippines. Second, the opening remark from Mr. Ahmad Fatoroji. The third is the general lecture with delivered by Mr. Harrison Sorpati, PhD, and will be led by our moderator, Mr. Ajib Yuniza. Four in this discussion response to the speaker by Mr. Mel John P. Abordi. And the fifth, the question and answer, answer session. Six, award certificate appreciation from Dean to speaker and moderator and uh, reactor. Seven, the closing remark by Dr. M. D. F. Arden. And ladies and gentlemen, let listen to the national anthem of Indonesia, followed by in, uh, national anthem of Philippines.
Okay, the next following agenda is the opening remark from the head of informatic departments of computer science from in, uh, Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya University, Mr. Ahmad Fatorosi. Mr. Ahmad Fatorosi, time is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to 27 International Collaborative Lecture Series between University Bayangkara Jakarta Raya and University of Danau with topic data analytics for cyber security. Today, we are gathered here to delve into a topic at most importance in our digital age. The synergy between data analytics and cybersecurity as we navigate an increasingly interconnected and technologically driven world. The landscape of threats and vulnerability continues to expand. In this context, the role of data analytics in bolstering our defense against cyber threats cannot be overstated. Cybersecurity challenges have evolved from where technical reasons too complex organized attack that target critical infrastructure, sensitive information, and even our personal identities. The deluge of data generated by our digital activities present both a challenge and or opportunity. It's within this data, the logs, the patterns, the anomalies, that we find the footprints of potential cyber threats and the clues to securing our digital realm. Data analytics provide us with the lens through we can make sense of the past and offer overwhelming sea and of information. By harnessing the power of advantage analytics tools, machine learning algorithm, and artificial intelligence, we gain the ability to detect even the most subtle derivation from the home. This enables us to identify threats in the real time predict potential risks and respond proactively rather than reactively. Imagine the scenario where our networks are fortified not just by firewall and intrusion detection system, but also by algorithms that continuously monitor and assess the digital environment. Scenarios where this algorithm learn from historical data, swiftly recognizing when user behavior stray from the usual or when network traffic patterns indicate something amiss. This is a promise that data analytics brings to the world of cybersecurity. However, it's essential to acknowledge that the power of data analytics in cybersecurity also comes with ethical consideration. Balancing the need for security with individual privacy rights and data protection is a challenge we must confront. As we embrace data-driven security strategies, we must ensure 
that our methods are transparent, are countable, and respectful of the right of individual and organization. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from experts who stand at the intersection of data analytics and cybersecurity. They will share their insights, experience, and the potential that lies in leveraging data as a shield against the ever-evolving landscape of cyber security. As we embark on this journey explanation, collaboration and innovation, let us remember that potential of data analytics in cybersecurity is not just about defending our digital borders, but about safeguarding the trust that underspins our interconnected world. Together, we can house the power of data analytics to build a safer, more resilient digital future for all. Thank you for joining on this enlightening expedition into the fusion of data analytics and cybersecurity. Together, we shall navigate these uncharted waters and for the safer and more resilient digital future. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much to Mr. Ahmad Patrozi for the opening remarks. And the next agenda is the general lecture with deliver by Mr. Harrison Subakti, PhD, and will be lead by our moderator, Mr. Ajit Yuniza. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Mr. Ajit Yuniza and Mr. Harrison Surbat. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, webinar, Collaborative Lecture Series. Uh, I'm your moderator today. Before we begin, I would like to introduce you to the speaker uh, and the reactor. Mr. Harrison Surbakti, PhD, has dedicated over a decade to teaching and supervising international undergraduate and postgraduate students, particularly in Southeast Asia, notably in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. Within the realm of data science, Dr. Subakti, Harrison Subakti's research interests gra gravitate towards data analytics, business intelligence, and knowledge management. He uh, explores groundbreaking approaches within those dom domains, striving to bridge the to to the divide between academia and industry. His expertise and unwearying passion for these fields not only render render him in invaluable assets to that to academic community, but also position him as influential figure in advancing knowledge. Harrison Trubati has a uh, right now full-time lecturer at Rangsit University International College and also Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya. And he has many publications and conference and uh, he also reviewer and editorial rules in many journals and also so many professional achievement and certification and training. Um, the reactor, the discussion response to the speaker by Dr. Mel John V. about the MSTS. Uh, let me tell you his curriculum VJ. Um, Dr. Mel John V. Aborde uh, from University of Mindanao has education in Doctors in Informatics Technology, Technological Institute of the Philippines, CIL, Master in, in Information Technology, University of Immaculate Conception, 2012. He has uh, many academic experience and non-academic experience. He has also many certification and professional registration and currently membership in professional organization is the Philippine Society of Information Techno and Technology Educators. Since 2022 to 2023, he has honors and awards 
by Philippine Society of Inter Information and Technology Educators as a service awardee as an officer five years in service from February 2021. He has many publications such as area um, system analysis and project management. And he also peer review in many uh, editorial journal like American Journal of Computer Science and Technology, International Journal of Computing Science Research, and practically pedagogy studies, and etc. So uh, today, uh, present about data analytics rule in cybersecurity, and without further ado, I would like to welcome our presenters to start presentation. Please welcome Mr. Harrison Sobat, PSD. Okay, Mr. Harrison, the time is yours. I can hear, we cannot hear you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I cannot unmute myself just now, so um, I think the co-host just uh, released the unmuting. Anyway, yeah. Um, I'm going to share my screen, but before I am sharing my screen, uh, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Mr. Ajith, we meet again. And uh, from colleagues, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, to colleagues from University of Mindanao, Dr. Melzon Abori and uh, Dr. Randy Ardina, um, nice to meet you guys, and also colleagues from uh, University Bayangkara, Jakarta. Uh, especially for Mr. Ajith Pratama Yusuf and Mr. Alan Alexander. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with you guys today. And I am going to uh, present the uh, general lecture today about the data analytics of role in cybersecurity. Um, please give me some minutes to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Can I? All right. So the topic that I would like to uh, deliver today is the role of the data analytics in cybersecurity. So um, it is about the data analytics role in cybersecurity. So how we can um, use the data analytics for cybersecurity. Um, my opening lecture today will be uh, a speech or quote from Edward Steaming. Uh, he says, without data, you are just another person with an opinion. Um, for us, computer scientists, data scientists, IT practitioner, IT scholars, and educators, we never, uh, we rarely say or deliver or conclude many things without the data. So whatever we say, whatever we are going to conclude must with the data. So like what Edward said, without data, you are just another person with an opinion. So from here, we can conclude that data is really, really important for us and for our daily life. And uh, about the security, sorry, uh, but the cybersecurity that I would like to uh, discuss today is um, cybersecurity in data analytics is a, can, we can say that a proactive approach to cybersecurity that uses data collection, aggregation, and analysis capabilities to perform the vital security functions that detect, analyze, and mitigate the cyber threats. So like what we agree so far, uh, for me, especially uh, 40 years of my life, I'm 
I agree that for the data collection, whatever data that we collect, we call it as whole data sometimes, whatever data that we collect, as long as it is not aggregated yet, as long as it is not analyzed yet, then it is just a bunch of trash, or we need to analyze it, right? We need to uh, use it. We need to, sometimes we perform the feature engineering to uh, get the patterns to make it more meaningful information to uh, to ourselves, to our superiors, and to our audience. Um, nowadays, and since long time ago, actually, we know that data is really, really important and expensive. We can say it's expensive. It's very expensive. And without data, nothing we can do. And also, those who own the data can win the war, not the real war. Like, for the, for the example, is the election war, for example. So if we have the data, we can analyze the data, we can do some magic, and we can predict. And also, uh, we can influence, we can make some uh, prescriptive analytics, right? Prescriptive analytics meaning what we want to be happen. So by getting the data, like for example, my data in my phone, for example, my behaviors, and my cookies, let's say just my behaviors when I use my phone, for example, what are those that I open every day? How many hours that I spend every day uh, scrolling the TikTok, for example, scrolling the Instagram, for example, scrolling the Facebook, for example, and then whatever uh, title or text that I click on my phone. If someone knows this kind of behavior, then they know my personality. And then maybe they can drive me or drive my mindset to change my opinion about someone. Like um, someone maybe someone might notice that I don't like this particular person, but because they understand, because they already knew that I uh, usually scrolling social media two hours a day, then they can inject some good things just to change my opinion about this particular person. So this is very uh, useful, actually, especially for the election, for, 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 for some case, for some case, not, not, for, not for the all cases. And this actually reminds me about... Um, Cambridge Analytica, and a few years ago become became a uh, very interesting news in some West countries. So they use the data without our permission. I mean, they use our data without our permission. So the data analytics for cybersecurity here is more to the privacy and threat, and then how this data, that we analyze the data in the cloud, for example, when we store our data, when we get back our data to be analyzed, how to make it secure. I mean, uh, how to make the way of the retrieving the data secure. So no one can intrude our transactional data. And the second is the tools that form the foundations of cybersecurity analytics work by using machine learning and behavior analytics to deep dive into networks and monitor suspicious activity. So not only suspicious activity, the behavioral analytics also can be used to read us as a person. And in addition, Machine learning technologies can also be used to conduct the threat and data analysis near real time. So can you imagine every time we scroll, someone out there knows what we scroll. Someone out there can read our personality, can detect our behavior in real time. So actually, 
uh, by using the psychological uh, technology, they can drive our mindset. Um, talking about the data analytics, there are three types of analytics, mainly in business analytics. Actually, it is four, but uh, the common data analytics that usually discussed uh, among scholars and universities is these three, prescriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. Uh, actually, there are there is another one called uh, diagnostic analytics, but because prescriptive and diagnostic is nearly the same, then uh, we just discuss these three analytics. So the interesting thing here is the enablers, like for example, the predictive, the predictive analytics, the enablers of uh, predictive analytics is a data mining. So how to make the predictive analytics enable? How what technique to enable the predictive analytics tasks? Here we have four uh, tasks. First, uh, sorry, uh, four techniques. First is data mining. Second is text mining. Third is media or web mining and forecasting. And then I can say, I can claim that all of it are advanced data mining or in the other word is machine learning so for forecasting for example the accuracy of the forecasting can be can be at or can be enhanced by using machine learning techniques by uh, using future engineering uh, techniques like adding the new label adding the new columns and um splitting the data set and so on so uh let's forget about the prescriptive analytics for a while and we can focus on the predictive analytics for for the moment and here i uh, i will discuss more to the data mining and machine learning for the advanced analytics techniques for cyber security uh tasks. So here there are four keys of the data mining techniques and it's classified by two uh, terms or two uh, um, clusters. First is predictive, second is descriptive. So these two analytics type relies on the six key data mining techniques. For the predictive, we have classification, we have regression, and we have the time series analysis. As we all know that the regression, classification, and time series analysis also uh, uh, commonly used in machine learning. Uh, I may say, I would like to say that the advanced analytics, which is machine learning, uh, can enrich the regression and time series analysis and also the classification. And the second is descriptive. There is uh, There are three tasks or techniques in descriptive analytics or descriptive analysis. First is association rules, usually uh, done for market basket analysis, and then clustering and summarization. So um, data mining in cybersecurity is the use of analytics techniques. Uh, here, I would like to say it is the advanced analytics because the data mining can be said as the advanced analytics. And it is a technique to uncover the hidden insights as we uh, notice that the data mining purpose is to find the patterns or to detect or to uncover the patterns, the hidden patterns among the data or between the data or in the data. So uh, the, this technique is to, uh, the, the purpose of these techniques, techniques is to uncover the hidden insights in large volumes of the data. For example, to uncover the hidden relation between the entities which have one, two, three, four, uh, many entities and 
we can see the uh, relation between the entities and to discover the frequent uh, the frequent uh, sequences of even among the entities and in the context of security data mining techniques is used by security tools to perform tasks like the anomaly detection um, classification and also to do the prediction like uh, to predict the threat um, if if we have the data anomaly like this like that like this like that and then we can predict the future attacks based on the historical data and uh, for some people out there they think that the historical data analysis is only for the profits purpose right for the financial purpose but actually we can do anything as long as we have the data and the next the the, the question here that i would like to discuss yeah. is how can the security data analytics combat the cyber threats or the big data analytics can or able to combat the cyber threats? So uh, after we implement the data analytics security, let's say by using machine learning techniques to predict or to forecast the future attacks or future threats, how can the security of big data analytics can combat the cyber threats? First of all, we can uh, use the correlation rule. The correlation rule is we manually define the rule specifying the sequence of event that indicates the anomaly, which could represent a security threat or uh, like uh, outliers. These outliers also can be used for uh, fraud detection. Um, like when we analyze the behavior of someone, the behaviors of spending money by using their credit card usually spend like $1,000 to $2,000 a month, for example. But in one day, they this person, this particular person spend almost $10,000 a day. So this behavior can be said as the outlier. And we have the anomaly data here. Then here for the correlates, uh, sorry, for the uh, outliers that we found, we can put as a red flag. Is it really the particular person who do who did the transaction? Okay. And the other thing is about the vulnerability or the active security incident. The second is the network vulnerabilities and risk assessment. But anyway, anyhow, however, they still suffer from these two key drawbacks. First is the false positive. Uh, false positive is one layer of the uh, confusing matrix. Why they still suffer from two key drawbacks? Because for here, for the false po positives, they are based on predefined rules. There is a high level of false positive which it can be led to enlarge the fatigue. So it is a predefined rules and signature. Uh, they are still these two correlation rules and network vulnerabilities risk and risk assessment still still suffer uh, from this drawback. First is a false for, sorry, first is a false positive. And the second is unexpected event. So here for the unexpected event, we can say that what happened if a new type of attack is attempted that no one had created a rule for. Like for example, we have the expert system and uh, we have the expert system of the threat detection, but this expert system doesn't notice the new attack 
because there is no rule for this new attack yet. So it is like a antivirus in Microsoft Windows. So every time that new virus come in, usually it's a uh, antivirus will let it pass because they don't know about it yet. That is for two or three decades ago. Two or three decades ago, all the antivirus for uh, Microsoft Windows operating system was were based on the specific rules. But nowadays, we use deep learning and machine learning and also the classification to detect the virus based on its behavior based on its keywords, based on its token, and based on its uh, many other techniques. Right? So um, the new analytics method are needed as what we discussed before. For the two or three decades ago, everything was, everything was in sequence, in a sequence, in, in, in a very specific rule. So if there are new threats coming without the specific rules, then usually these virus or attacks will be passed by the antivirus. So that is the uh, urge of the new analytics method or techniques. Uh, let's consider about the attacks from the data, uh, sorry, the attacks from the cloud or from the website, let's say, or we have the data, right? We have the data, we download the data. Usually this data downloaded um, based on our, our uh, understanding, we just download the raw data, but sometime this raw data injected by a malware, by some malwares or some, some uh, injected um, threats, right? So when we input the data, especially when we do the web scraping, we have the specific URLs and we can uh, do the who is uh, about this URL, who are the owner of this URL or domain or website name, and uh, what kind of pages, which pages that we want to scrap and what content that we want to scrap. And because we use machine learning algorithm to make it more safely downloading, then we need to label the data. Why we need to label the data? Because after, because this data label will make it, make us easier to do the feature engineering later, to clean the data, to, uh, aggregate the data and so on. Okay. And after we get the data by using machine learning algorithm, then for this machine learning algorithm, we'll get the predictive model. Okay. We'll get the data, uh, we'll, 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 we'll detect the data that we just downloaded by using the predictive model. So if it is not really the data that we want, then it will be eliminated. That is the uh, sequence or the algorithm about data scraping. And this algorithm can be used to secure or to prevent the attacks as well. For example, we do the data label. We do the data label about what Ever threat that coming from the website, that coming from the internet, all this label will be classified as a dangerous by our predictive model, uh, sorry, uh, by our machine learning algorithm or machine learning techniques. And then our predictive model will get all, all, all of this content, will analyze it and will predict which are threat and which are the safe data to be downloaded, then we can do the decision. Actually, this algorithm can be used uh, for many things. 
So we have the framework, we have the data pipeline, we have the uh, algorithms, and now it's depend on us for what kind of use that we want to do. I mean, what kind of uh, thing that we, want, that we want to use for this uh, pipeline or algorithms. And the thing about the machine learning and the data mining, actually data mining and machine learning, they're similar. Just the different, from my personal opinion, uh, the difference between the data mining and machine learning is machine learning has a what we call as uh, feature engineering, so adding the new labels. But data mining, I might be wrong, so uh, the reactor can correct me later, Mr. Mel Dr. Melton might correct me later. Uh, based on my personal opinion, personal knowledge, data mining has no such of feature engineering. There is no adding labels in data mining. There is no such of adding new columns in data mining. I might be wrong. Please correct me if I am wrong. And But in machine learning, we have what we call as a um, feature engineering or uh, tokenization and many other techniques. And the uh, thing that, that make machine learning is really, really fascinating or fascinating is the unsequence. So there is no the specific rule that it has to follow. I mean, we set the rule, but it can, that, that, that's why we call it as machine learning because it can learn by itself, right, machine learning. We will discuss about it later in the next slides. So data mining and machine learning are closely related fields that deal with the extracting knowledge and insights from the data. First is to discover the patterns. Both data mining and machine learning, the purpose of them is to discover the pattern and also to discover the relationships and to turn data into meaningful information. This number three is the very crucial, important thing that why we use machine learning and data mining since 10 decades ago, maybe since hundreds of years ago, we just, we just uh, our ancestor just didn't mention or didn't name it as a, a data mining, but since 100, 100 years ago, data mining techniques already been implemented to, to uh, detect the patterns, to find the patterns, and to turn the data, the raw data, the unuseful data, the, 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 the garbage data, the dirty data, the swamp data into meaningful information. That's how they win the war. That's how the winner the champion win the task or the war. And data mining and machine learning has or have the distinct focus and methodologies, like, like what I mentioned um, uh, earlier in machine learning, we have what we, they have what we know as, it has what we know as feature engineering. And to extend, data mining usually is the process of discovering the useful patterns or the useful knowledge from the large volumes of the data. So uh, we can use data mining to analyze the big volume of the data, the big data, the five Gs or three Gs and four Gs. And data mining also enforces the techniques for to identify the hidden pattern, to identify the relationship, the hidden relationship, to identify or to detect the anomalies, like what we discussed before uh, about the outliers. And the information that might not be immediately apparent. So it is 
we cannot see the information yet based on the data. So by using data mining techniques, then we can now see the data, oh, sorry, the patterns. Right? And typically, data mining is used to explore and to analyze, uh, and analyze the historical data, yeah, of course. If not the historical data, then it called as the forecasting or prediction. All right. Uh, in the other hand, machine learning is a subset of AI that focus on developing the algorithms. And mainly we just focus on the model, what kind of model that we can improve, what kind of model that we want to use part by part, section by section. And these algorithms designed to recognize the patterns as well and, uh, and the relationship as well within the data. So it is just like what the data mining uh, tend to uh, achieve, right? But with the different technique. And the technique of machine learning includes the classification, regression, clustering, and reinforcement learning. So this classification is a model. Regression is a model. Clustering is a model. And then uh, as a lecturer, I usually found my students say machine learning model or machine learning algorithm. Then I ask what kind of algorithm or what kind of model. And they insist not only one, two, or three times. Not only once, not only two times, but many times during my time as a lecturer. And the student said, a machine learning, sir. Yes, machine learning, but what kind of machine learning model? And they extend to explain the algorithms and say, a machine learning algorithm to uh, classify this data, to make the uh, class and so on. And I say, okay, so you are talking about the classification. Uh, yes, sir, I am talking about the classification. Then your model is a classification. And this student, interestingly, the student said, no, sir, I am using a machine learning model to do the classification. Um, from my personal opinion, again, I need to be corrected if I am wrong. From my personal opinion, and I believe I am right, but I might be wrong. Machine learning is just a technique. And there are plenty of models in, 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 in a machine learning. So when we talk about the machine learning techniques, or sorry, when we talk about the machine learning model, then we need to be specific. What kind of model? Is it classification? Is it regression? Is it clustering? Or another model? So to simplify it, we can just say machine learning techniques. So I am, let's say, I am using the classification model uh, by using, uh, I'm using the machine learning techniques by implementing classification model. That would be better. I mean, uh, as we know, right, there are some lecturers out there, not me, obviously, not me. some lecturers out there, they are very, very strict. They sometimes they don't allow us to use the different or other jargon or terms other than what they want. But we can correct students because they are still learn, right? And we are not always right as well, even though we work for it for many years, but we might be wrong. So that's why I were, I was really, really salute. I appreciate it if when every time I met lecturers who are voluntarily working with their students. I mean, that's very good. Um, anyway, 
And then the primary objective of machine learning is to build the predictive model. So the goal of machine learning usually is to build the predictive model up to the forecasting. And then one step uh, further is for prescriptive analytics. Prescriptive analytics is about what we want to be happen, like, like what we discussed before, how we can influence, how we can make some people or how we can drive people to do something that what we want, like, like how to win the election, right? Let's say we know that this person, he won't vote for A, but by using these techniques, we probably, 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 I don't say we will, but probably this particular person can change his mind to vote for A. Anyway, um, the general data science understanding based again, again, please correct me if I am wrong, based on my personal opinion, my personal knowledge, uh, I'm uh, comparing to some seniors, right? Some seniors, uh, I'm still learning about the data science and analytics, so I might be wrong for anything that I said here. That's why thank you for uh, Ubara to uh, facilitate this uh, session with a reactor. So uh, we call it, well, we can say that uh, we have the moderator here to moderate the speaker. So whatever the speaker might say wrong, then the moderator can correct. Anyway, based on my personal opinion again, once again, based on my, op my personal opinion, the data science, uh, the general understanding of data science is data science involves the automated retrieval of insights from unprocessed data. So insight. So we retrieve the insights from the unprocessed data. So how about the data retrieval, sir? I mean, uh, data retrieval, Dr. Harrison. The data retrieval is the other part of the data science task. We can call it as data engineering, perhaps. So uh, generally, data science is the task that involves the automated retrieval of insights from unprocessed data. And so we need other techniques to process the data because when we have the data, then we can process this data for many purposes. We can use this data for uh, forecasting, for prediction, for describe what just happened, or to see or to diagnose what was happened in the past three years, for example. So by performing the data science itself, it is not really helpful to prevent ourselves from the cyber attacks. Because in the general understanding of the data science, it is just to retrieve the insights from the unprocessed data. So if there is some malware in the data that we retrieve, that we won't detect by using the general data science techniques. Uh, general data science techniques, I may say here, is statistics, for example, the statistics. Let's say regression or logistic regression or whatsoever we call in the general statistics, right? Because statistics is a root of the data science. Uh, please correct me if I am wrong. So uh, machine learning and data science, it, uh, after we discuss about the different or the relation between the data science, sorry, uh, machine learning and data mining, now we discuss a little bit about the machine learning and data science. So data science is the art of turning the data into actions. So we have data and we make the action about this data by performing the data science task. 
This is accomplished through the creation of data products which provide the actionable information without exposing the decision makers. So no one knows who doing this, right? Because the decision makers is just stay behind the data. Okay, anyway. And what the data science is not is doing the sequence, right? So data science not doing the algorithm, the old algorithm like this, like what we discussed in the previous slides about the rule. Okay, can you imagine if we have this rule? Step one, step two, step three, step four. The common algorithm of this rule is the uh, all or or the traditional expert system. So we have the rule, right? The if if then else rule for the expert system. If there is no if then in this step one, two, three, four, then our system won't detect it as a threat. Okay, so this is what make it fascinating for me, especially about the machine learning and data science, about, about, about the data science. So data science is not really, really uh, in sequence. I mean, not 100%. Of course, data science do everything in sequence, but not 100%, step one, step two, step three, step four, like this, then goal like this. Might be step one to step three, or step one to step two to step three, and then back again to step one, right? So what the data science really, really do is we try something, for example, and if it is work, uh, no, it is not work, then we try again. If it is work, then we try again to learn something. So the data science is the loop of learning. That's why there are many algorithms nowadays in data science domain, in data science field uh, that improve for the analytics and also for machine learning. They use the swarm algorithms, for example, or end algorithm, for example, and they optimizing it. That's why we have one little task in data science uh, framework, which is optimization. So data science in general, data science or machine learning experts in general, they extract the data, they aggregate the data, they analyze the data, they visualize the data, and then they uh, optimize the data. If there is no optimization, then we call it as analyst. That's all analyst that's that's all because the analyst task is to find the goal to find the pattern and so the goal it has the goal the specific goal for the decision making but for machine learning experts or machine learning scientists it is for optimization how to optimize our current algorithm to be more powerful by adding the new label by adding the new feature. So when we talk about the machine learning, that, that's why sometimes I feel like, can you be more specific about machine learning if everything I talk with the student or everything, every time I uh, examine the student, when they talk about the machine learning, I need them to be more specific because machine learning for me is really, really like a big lake. I don't know what I am doing here if I I I didn't uh, get the specific terms. That is what I experience uh, based on my experience. That's what. Uh, that's why I always say it also during this session, machine learning is just a technique, and a lot of uh, algorithms that build the machine learning. And these algorithms also optimize very well. Every decade or every year or every month, like for example, new PhD, new doctorate, 
they use one algorithm in machine learning to optimize it to be more powerful to solve the problem in the real world. So how many doctorate graduated every day from around the world? And how many optimization that be resolved every day? And the machine learning is the science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed. Meaning how to make this algorithm learn by itself and enrich itself. That's why we call it as machine learning, right? The machine that can learn by itself or learn from itself, right? So the computer program is said here, uh, without being explicit, uh, explicitly programmed. So the computer program is said to learn from experience. So I think all of us uh, admit, right? All of us know, right, that the machine learning is a model that can learn from its experience. So a computer program is said to learn from experience E with respect to some task T and some performance measure, which is P, if its performance on T in some task as measured by P for the performance measure, that improve with experience of E, the previous experience. So it's kind of um, complex algorithms. Right, that's why we need to uh, optimize it time by time and always do the optimization. So, um, the cybersecurity, the other hand, the aim of the cybersecurity, in the other hand, is to prevent by detecting and respond to the threat. Detect, prevent, or respond. So we detect first, oh, uh, we have the threat here. So we detect the threat. And then do we have to prevent or we just respond? Respond meaning we fight for it, right? If we get the threat, then we fight for it. For the prevention, if we see or if we detect the threat, then we build the wall or firewall in a uh, our system or in a computer, right? So the prevention of cyber attack against the critical assets, uh, we, what we want to aim is just to make sure that all of our critical assets are safe, detection of the threat and to respond to the threat. Uh, respond to the threat might be cost a lot and for the beginning, maybe if we uh, get the threat, just prevent for it. Right. Okay, so what kind of assets that usually affected in the cybersecurity? There are three classifications here. First is a personal asset, second is public assets, and the third is the corporate asset. These corporate assets are usually the target of the attacker and the funny thing here is when they attack the corporate or when they attack the corporation and they got the attacker got the personal assets like for example we have the website here number two right let's say um Shopee or Lazada websites being attacked by the attacker, right? By let's say the hacker, the common terms. So some hacker, the black hat, the black hat hacker, intrude to the databases, to their databases. They got the data of what data? The personal data, the personal data. So they have the credit card, information, the bank account information, and the 
more interesting things is the media if I uh, sorry the cloud drives so can you imagine if you are using Mac I'm sorry to say the brand okay if you're using Mac right so uh, you have to register uh, Mac cloud right iCloud right and we usually, especially the Mac users, we usually sync it to the cloud. So every time we get the new picture, it is automatically uh, uploaded to the iCloud. We took the picture, video, and what do you think when you took a picture of your credit card? It is uploaded, it is synced to the cloud. And if someone get or can log in to your iCloud. But I don't know if uh, there is a new technique to prevent all of this from Mac, from Apple. I, I just, it is just reminds me about uh, what happened in the past to some artists. Of course, it was not about the great type, but more sensitive content. The motivation behind the cyber threats usually is the profit based on profit usually usually so first is the motivation behind the cyber threat first is stealing the intellectual property second is gaining the access to the customer data making political statement for example uh, for for instance performing cyber espionage this is number three and number four is for the high level and damaging reputation, making a splash or for fun, just for fun, and so on. So, how the machine learning or data analytics can prevent this uh, common motivation of cyber threat, like stealing intellectual prof uh, property or performing the cyber espionage, for example? Um, in this slide, I made some very simple example, which is preventing the spam. Uh, as we know, there are so many emails that say usually from uh, Nigeria, usually, 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 but not all, usually. And they said that they are the prince of A, B, C, D, and they have the money of blah, 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 and they need our help to cash out their money. They cannot cash out the money because they are got sabotaged by the military, for example. And around like one decade ago, one of my friends came to me and said, I got this email and asking me to invest. And I said, how come this email comes to your inbox? It's supposed to be thrown to the spam folder. But anyway, can you imagine if many people receive receiving this kind of email and 20% of them are not aware about the fraud? And the second thing is about the link phishing link, an email from, let's say, the tax department. They say, they said they are from tax department and you need to click this link to renew your personal information. And if it landed into our inbox, in our email, that we might think that this is the true or the correct sender. This is really, really sent by the tax department. So all of this threat, all of this fraud should be thrown to the spam folder, right? And here I am discussing about this spam in the next slide about the spam classification. So the tokenization, the keyword, and the classification techniques of machine learning take its 
own role. Okay, so how this uh, specific algorithm can save us from the fraud or can detect the fraud, right? So to handling the cyber attacks, we can do the resources protection, defense, we can do capture the data logs. Capturing the data logs here is like who accessing my database. I only have one user of my database, which is me, for example. And I always access my database from my office. Then why I have three different IPs here, for example. That's why capturing data logs is really, really important. And then monitoring system, tracing the attacks, predicting the risks, by predicting, uh, for the predicting risks, uh, sorry, predicting risks, uh, we can do the advanced analytics here, like regression, for example, for the supervised learning, to predict, right? predict the attacks and identify the vulnerability. The overall area of cybersecurity here, network security, cyber uh, sorry, cyber physical security, data and information security, and application security, they are all can be implemented in the data analytics. Like for the network security, we can build the dashboard to see the anomaly. For the cyber physical security, also the same. We can build the dashboard to see the logs. Data and information security, application security, all the same. We can build the dashboard to see the anomaly, to see the outliers, to see the unusual activity by implementing the real-time data analytics. So we can read all the data, the activities in the current day. And the sub-area of cybersecurity, there are two uh, sub-area of cybersecurity. First is uh, physical cybersecurity. The second is the data analytics. Data analytics is the cross-cutting across the area to learn from existing threats and develop the solution for novel and unknown threats. So this is what I uh, mentioned about the spam just now. So like, let's say uh, we have spam, right? We have the fraud threat uh, from what I discussed before. They tried to do the fraud. They tried to scam us by admitting themselves as a prince from Nigeria, for example. But actually, there are so many types of this spam. First, by doing fraud, uh, by trying to influence us psychologically. Second is by sending us the fake uh, link, for example, and so on, many things. So how to prevent this kind of spam? Machine learning, which is implemented by many email providers, almost all email providers, such as Google email or Gmail, uh, Microsoft email, Outlook, and so on, they classify they do the classification techniques to classify the types of spam, all right? So, and all of this classification, then we label. Some of them can be blacklist, so it won't be landed, not even into our spam folder, but just rejected. To make it able to be thrown to the uh, spam folder usually by using the simple keyword matching. So this is the behavior of the spam in the past. That in the future, if there are sim there are some keyword match with this kind of keyword, then it will be thrown into the spam folder. So we use the text mining for the classification, and also the unusual link. The unusual link that sent into our website, uh, sorry, into our email, will be thrown into the spam folder, especially if the sender send the same link in too many people in the same time, or simply record their IP address or MAC address. 
So if this spammer send many emails to to many people, sorry, if this person send one email to many people, then it can be labeled as a spammer. Okay. So how the data analytics help as what we discussed uh, previously, uh, we use the artificial intelligence because machine learning is a part of the uh, artificial intelligence as what we see here in this slide. Machine learning is a subset of AI techniques which use the statistical method to enable the machine to improve itself by using its experience. And the specific uh, task that can be done in machine learning also the functions, the specific functions that we call as deep learning. So the deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which make the computation of multi-layer and, and the multi-layer neural network, multi-layer neural network can be feasible. And uh, how machine learning can um, solve the problem. There are two uh, problems that, that can be solved by machine learning. First is the supervised learning, and second is unsupervised learning. The supervised learning in the next slide is the same color with this slide, and unsupervised learning will be colored by uh, light blue. So classification and regression is unsupervised learning. Sorry. Classification and regression is a supervised learning while clustering and uh, dimensionality reduction is a unsupervised learning. And classification and regression is commonly used to predict the threat or to predict the attack. And the challenges, the challenge to implement the machine learning usually first is the lack of the data quality. There are too many uh, noise in the data, and then data privacy concerns. For the data privacy concerns, I I would like to discuss more about it later in the, my very last slide. This data privacy concerns is um, lack of the transparency of data or information, or more to the discrimination. Uh, it is not like people discrimination. No, it is like discrimination to the data. Uh, the data vendor gives us the particular data, but they don't give us the access to the other data that we actually need. That is what we call as a data discrimination. You know, why you give this data to me, but not the data. You know that we need both of this data, right? But why, right? And the third is key. QA, quality assurance issues, and the technical complexity. So the traditional QA approach are not applicable with machine learning. So uh, there are some difficulties for QA to align with this uh, new technique. And um, there are, I think, I already talked one and 15 minutes. All right. Um, the machine learning problem types that that, that uh, there are uh, three types that we know right uh, four classification regression and clustering and here we have regression classification and clustering to see the patterns right first let's talk about the label so we have the categorical we have the quantity width of the data type that you have is it categorical data or the numerical data. If it is categorical data, then we can do regression. If it is the qualitative, uh, sorry, if it is the quantitative data, then we can use the classification. But what what is the machine learning and label actually? So um, this is the example of the regression uh, that we can implement or that we can uh, find in the real world, like to predict the uh, memory utilization. And then the clustering example to find the data anomaly, which is anomaly detection. As you can see here, we have the uh, data anomalies here. 
right? Um, we have the outliers here. We have the outlier here. Now these outliers we call as the anomaly, right? And we have the three clusters here, but we have three outliers that not belong to any cluster. So we can uh, use the clustering techniques for detect the threat as well. And I think I will just skip this and the process, I will just skip this because I explain a lot in the previous slides. I will jump to this. So this is the, 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 the machine learning process. In, uh, sorry, I mean, this is the process or this is the data that we usually find. Can you imagine if we just use the traditional statistics, right? Without feature engineering uh, feature, without feature engineering. So the feature here, the color is gray, the fins, and the fins is seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is included in the thing. Okay, anyway, have seven fins and has the predator. And it is a predator. So the feature is color fins predator. Okay. So if the predator is true, the color is gray, the fins is seven, so it is a shark. But the problem here is what about the dolphin? If we have the new data that we retrieve, right? we retrieve the new data, we get the dolphin here. The color of the dolphin met the value. The fins of the dolphin met the value. And the predator, is it a predator? No, right? But the system will detect the dolphin as predator because two features here already been uh, uh, confirmed, right? Same color, same thing. So it is predator, but it is wrong. It's not a predator. That is how, that's why we did machine learning. That's why we did the feature engineering here by adding the new label. Let's call it as mammal. So if it is mammal, then it is dolphin. If it is not mammal, then it's shark. So that is how the feature engineering can ease us, can make it easy for us to detect the threat, the cyber threat. So um, the data uh, life cycle, okay, we have the discovery, the data discovery, we prepare the data, and if uh, we have the data prepared already, then we do the model planning and model, build, uh, model building, just like what we did in uh, data mining, right, or machine learning. And here in data, in data mining, we have what we usually call as Chris DM. The Chris DM is a life cycle on how we deploy the certain or the specific model that we can use to analyze the data to get the goal to get the conclusion, to make the decision. And I have the case study here that I open the discussion. I need some inputs here, like for example, uh, for this case study, a telecom company in Bangkok, in Thailand, needs a live dashboard to see the uh, customer churn, but but here we can for 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 the threat for the threat we can change the customer churn into the threat right so anyway the case here is a telecom company in Bangkok in Thailand needs a live dashboard so if the new data come in then the dashboard will be updated automatically every time the new data injected or stored into the database, then the chart will be automatically updated. So 
they requested to build a live dashboard with consideration of ingestion phase to the visualization uh, to the visualization phase security, protect data that needs to remain private. This is the very big issues. This is the very big issue in everywhere nowadays, data privacy. And the third is remain in compliance with regulations of security standards. What is the standard in Indonesia? What is the standard in Thailand? What is the standard in Philippines? Of course, different country has the different standard, right? So it's quite confusing. I mean, especially if we want to develop something in our country, but we hire the vendor from another country and then authenticate and authorize the users of analytics solution. There are three domains proposed so far. First is to select the appropriate authentication and authorization mechanism. Second is applying the data protection and encryption techniques that is for the security standard. Uh, yep, security standard and number four for the uh, user uh, authorization. And then the third is data governance for control. So um, maybe we can open for this case study in QA later. If not, then just let's open for the other QA. I think that's all from me for today. Um, thank you, everyone. And I give the chair to the moderator, Mr. Ajih. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Harrison Subakti, PhD. So uh, before we go, go to the next uh, session, uh, I would like to making conclusion about what Mr. Horizon uh, Subakti uh, presentation. Um, determining in cybersecurity using to predict the future attacks. And also big data analytics combat cyber threats. Uh, there are two mains. This is uh, their correlation rules, network for vulnerabilities and risk management. Data mining and machine learning used to discover patterns, to discover relationships, to turn data into meaningful information. Data science involves the automatic of insight from unprocessed data. The cyber security aims prevent prevention of cyber attacks against critical assets, to a detection of the threats, respond to the threats, and recover and restore the normal state of the system. Assets affected to uh, three mains, personal, public, and corporate, and motivation behind cyber threats is stealing intellectual property. Second is gaining access to customer data. Third, making a political statement for performing cyber as PNH, uh, five damaging reputation and handling cyber attacks um, like protecting, protecting resources, hardening defenses, capturing data logs, monitoring systems, tracing the attacks. Overall, overall areas of cybersecurity, data, analysis, data analytics in network security, data analytics in cyber physical security, data analytics for data and information security, data analytics for application security. The challenge also uh, for the machine learning in cybersecurity or data mining in cybersecurity is lack of data quality, data privacy, privacy concerns, quality assurance issues, technical complexity, and uh, in the end, you give us a case study from a telecom company in Bangkok. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Harrison. Uh, 
Now we are going to the next is the discussion response to the speaker by Dr. Mel John via Borde MSCS. Please welcome Dr. Mel John via Borde MSCS. Um, uh, am I audible? Can I be heard? Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you so much. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very makasi. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Um, yes. Thank you for this. <laughs> thank you for that one. Um, uh, thank you for this opportunity to become your reactor for this specific lecture. This is actually um a privilege in my end to be your reactor. Um, uh, first and foremost, the topic was quite interesting in my end because it somewhat covers three specific things. Number one, it covers data uh, analytics. Uh, the second one I think there's something wrong with the audio. The second one would be on machine learning, and the third one would be on cybersecurity. So all of those three things were put together to come up with this specific lecture. Um in my end, I was actually thinking that there were already a series of lectures in relation to the following topics. That's why we had come up with this um, merged discussion already. Now, these three things would be very interesting considering that data analytics, as I just mentioned a while ago, is one of actually the trends in today's uh, nowadays in terms of decision support. And then in terms of machine learning, well, this is to improve current processes with implementation of different techniques. Then finally, with cybersecurity, which is actually one of the main problems in the field of information technology in general, that amidst advances and the development of new um, security uh, components, there are still problems in relation to such ones. So in putting this one together, this might be something that could be um, a starting point in terms of improving further what we have in the technology era. Now, what was presented a while ago by Dr. Sir Bakti could be a good introductory discussion in cybersecurity and how data analytics could be implemented to it. Though there are some that needs to be further improved in terms of the topic that was given, maybe because of the time constraint, um, that could be further improved. It is also nice to provide such discussion uh, since security is still a main problem until now. Even the advancement of technology, which I've mentioned a while ago, issues of security is still eminent, and that might be a start of improving security measures by putting machine learning at work. Another thing is that I think Sir uh, Dr. Harrison made mention of labeling a while ago. Well, based on what on my notes, there's actually limits in terms of storage and computing power. Well, this is on the hardware component already, considering that um, if you don't have any hardware components with you, there's still a problem in terms of labeling data. I've erased some of the items here, which this was already discussed also by our esteemed speaker. Data science was also mentioned a while ago, and it was compared with data analytics. Well, in terms of the two, they are somewhat slightly similar, but in terms of its um, scope, I think data science much more greater. It encompasses analytics, in a way that it also involves data engineering, which was mentioned a while ago also. Likewise, well, it, it uh, with machine learning. And finally, in terms of some of the notes that I have here, machine learning is actually a specific field of, uh, in, of artificial intelligence. Okay, And techniques are actually depending on the type of interest of the certain person who would like to study machine learning. Um, I have just some concern or question. I mean that uh, that might be uh, embedded, siguro, on possible discussions for future uh, discussions with regards to this topic, such as uh, machine learning and AI analytics, uh, AI-driven analytics. How could it be? It, it be sorry, how could it be effectively applied to detect new and evolving cyber attacks or cyber threats that traditional methods might miss? So this could be something that can be embedded, considering that we are talking about cybersecurity. Uh, again, this uh, the topic that was discussed was uh, just an introductory, but to have it much more deeper, 
these are some of the things that might be uh, considered. Another one would be some challenges in terms of analyzing encrypted data, considering that some of the data nowadays are somewhat protected also for cybersecurity purposes and how can these challenges be overcome without compromising privacy, wherein pri uh, data privacy is also in act. And finally, what are some ethical considerations that should be taken into account when analyzing personal or sensitive data for cybersecurity purposes? So these are some of the notes which I was able to get while actually um, reading the slides that was given at the same time while listening to our esteemed speaker a while ago. But overall, what was presented was actually very interesting. Um, it was very uh, what, yeah, fruitful in terms of the different inputs given to us. I hope this could be a stepping stone at the same time, um, a benchmark in our end, no? in terms of teaching cybersecurity at the same time, data analytics. That's all. Thank you and congratulations to our esteemed lecturer. Um, sorry, we could not hear you. So the, the cybersecurity, uh, the, the data mining get attacked. So the, the data mining may uh, give the prediction false, wrong, or something like that. How about that? Um, I will... Uh, this question for Mr. Harrison. Also, I, I want to know also the perspective from Mr. Meljan. Uh, um, thank you, Mr. Ajit and uh, dear, dear Dr. Meljan. It's uh, nice to be here with you to share this, um, to discuss more about uh, data analytics and cybersecurity. The first note that I can take note it was about how can the machine learning can be used for the future right for the cyber security in the future um let's think about the real world crimes usually what I can say is by using this metaphor is like the threat, the crimes is always one step in front. So for the cybersecurity, we cannot do much when we have no threat yet. So we learn from the threat. That's the first. The second is if there is no threat, then we must use our brain and change it into the threat. But I mean, we have to think about what the criminals think about. So we have to act like criminals. Before the crimes came, then we need to know, we need to understand what kind of the criminals that can be appeared to prevent. But that is the metaphor that I can that I can uh, say for the moment. I mean, uh, beyond of the very technical things, right? The second is about the challenges by analyzing the encrypted data. Um, this is very good uh, insights for me, right? How we can analyze the encrypted data, right? The encrypted data already stored in the database. And when we data store it, even though is it, it is a in the, in, the, in the cloud or in a local host, for example, when we get the data, when we retrieve the data, if the data is encrypted, 
than how to analyze it, right? That is very, 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 very correct. That is true, very true. That's why we have two keys, right? Public key and private keys. So before we encrypt our own data, we have to implement this kind of encryption techniques for the public key and private key. We store the data into the data storage. We encrypt the data. We retrieve the data for the analysis. Then we decrypt the data. Okay. That is uh, what I understand about the data analysis based on the encrypted data. So before for the data analytics, for the data, for the security analysts, they must think about it. Do not just store the, the encrypted data without the public key and private key. I think um, that's all I can say for these two things. Uh, it was another thing, another another note, I think, right? Or only these two? Um, I think it's, it's on the ethics. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, ethics and labeling. The ethics, I actually for the ethics, for the cyber ethics, privacy, security, and ethics. The security is kind of easy to manage. Privacy also can be easier, easy, can be easy to manage. Just make some regulation, ask the government to make the regulation right. But for the ethics, for the ethics, I think this is the huge problem in all countries. But like for example, the ethics here is you need to encrypt the data before you store it in the cloud. But the question is the cloud located in the United States of America. So how to align the the the, the good rule for these ethics? And second, when we talk about the ethics, the one who use unethically the one who used this data unethically can simply say, it's okay in my country and your data store in my country. That is the big, big problem, right? So that's why I think, that's why our president in Indonesia asked this kind of developers, if you don't open your factory or your office in my country, then we will shut you down. Like for Telegram, WhatsApp, we will shut you down. You cannot access in my country. I think, I think, I, I don't know. Um, that's from my very humble opinion. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, uh, I would like to ask you about cybersecurity and data mining. You prefer, your presentation about data mining in cybersecurity, but I would like to ask you about cybersecurity and data mining. How about data mining get attack from uh, malicious then making predict wrong. So is that possible or? Uh, the wrong prediction you mean? Yes. Uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's possible, right? Uh, yeah, the possible. cyber security and data mining. So, yeah. Yeah, because rarely we hear about cybersecurity in the, in the in data mining. Always we hear about data mining in cybersecurity, so we can about predict the future attacks. But how about the model get attack? Hmm. Is that possible? Model can get attack. Um. Yeah, of course. So you need to. Uh... Make it safe as well. I mean, the model is usually in the code, right? So if someone can inject your code, then what do you think are going to happen? Then they modify your model. Yes. Yeah. 
Hey, uh, yeah, of course, of course, there is uh, always opportunity for the model attacks because our model, when we implement the certain model or the specific model into the system, we are not implementing the mathematical formula, but the codes. Right? The mathematical yes. formula is the only the formula or the paper, but the real thing that we implement is the code. And what do you think happen if someone modify the code? Oh, such as uh, many areas we should cover because cybersecurity is uh, right now is very widely and um, we can protect in many uh, such as areas. You, you said that data analytics for networks, cyber physical security data, not only also, but also application security. But now data analytics, can get attacked. So that can be like, <laughs> thank you very much for the question. Uh, we have question from the chat from Mr. Adi Mohajirin. Regarding the role of data analytics in cybersecurity, I would like to learn more about how the data analytics approach can help identify potential data leaks in Indonesia and address them more effectively. I would appreciate Mr. Subakti's insight on these issues. Thank you. I I cannot see the question in the chat, but from what I just uh, heard from Mr. Ajit, it's about the how the data analytics approach can prevent the threat. Is it correct? Yes. How the data, okay. So uh, basically, when we talk about the data analytics, right, it is about monitoring. There are three types of the data analytics, four actually, diagnostic, descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive. So the first, the thing that I highlighted here today is about the prediction. Right. How to predict how to predict the threat by using data analytics technique, and this data analytics techniques narrow it down to the data mining, and then this data mining uh, and read into the machine learning techniques. So we are using machine learning to do the prediction, to do the forecasting about the threat. So um, to predict or the data analytics approach to predict the security threat in Indonesia, we need to know what kind of threats that we want to uh, discuss further. First, let's say the data leak right, by, by some hackers that they say that they are from Russia or they are using the uh, Russia's uh, name. Yorka, and also the data leak from the uh, general election, KPU, and the data leak of the Tokopedia. So the data analytics approach to predict this kind of threat is to get the logs, to monitor the logs, because the attacker, usually the attacker, the intruder, usually, they learn about our system first. They are not come and get the things and then run away. No, they need to learn our system first. So when this attacker learn about our system, about our vulnerabilities, about the port, about the opening port, in which port that they can get in, then we can see the lock, the unusual lock. How many days or how many hours that this IP or MAC address tried to log in or tried to attack or tried to inject the script, the SQL script, for example, when we talk about the SQL injection, right? It is based on the trial and error. String or string, double string equals to string to manipulate the SQL string to get the username and password, for example. When we build the software for this, 
for this uh, trial and error, it's still using the same logic. Try this password, try this password, try this password, try this password. But it used the very, very fast in sequence. So we have the bandwidth consumption. But anyway, the point is, first thing that I would like to say is by using the logs, the system log. And then the server uh, metric. So if we have the outliers or the anomaly, like for example, in the last few years, our server is our our server consumption only like fifty to seventy percent. Then why in the in these past two weeks we got the server usage about seventy five percent? So something anomalies happen there. So uh, from my point of view, is the from logs and the <clears throat> data anomaly. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we are waiting for the questions. Um, from uh, maybe uh, from University of Mindano, students are Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya students. Or the audience can ask. Okay, uh, this from Muhammad Ali Mustaqim from Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya. As we know that security may have many threats. One of them is insider threats. How can we discover the pattern of data if the threats is come from the inside? That they don't have to broke the security because they have credential. Is any order is an is any another technique? I'll be happy to if Mr. Subakti to answer this question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Aji. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to this uh, person who asked this question, Mr. Muhammad Ali Mustakim. I've been teaching data warehouse for a few years. And I always told my students, you must use data marks. So I think Mr. Ajif knows what I wanted to say, right? So when you use the data marks that you prevent the use or the users or the business users, like for example, we have the big data storage, right? Let's say this is the data warehouse. And then we have the data marks. This data mark A is for the audit department. This data mark B is for the IT department. This audit C, uh, this data mark C is for another department. So each of the business users, each of these data mark can access the, 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 the data warehouse, but with a specific access. So answering your questions, right? If you use data warehouse or if you have the specific uh, users that access the different data, so it's very easy to detect, right? But if you hack yourself, I mean, let's say you are the owner of the company and you steal your own data and you sell your own data, that can be the big problem. So we need the auditor, the computer forensic auditor, and also the detective, the psychologist as well, to see in what time he accessed the, or his own database, his own data, and in what day, in what time that he leaves the country, he left the country, who he met, and to whom he probably sort the data and get the money from them. I think if from our own uh, side, when we steal our own assets, right, to save our own self, 
But if it is done by our employee, by our staff, I think it is not really hard to know. But uh, as what I mentioned previously to Dr. Nelson, usually the crimes always step in front of us. So we learn from the crime. Once we get this crime, then we learn about how to prevent it. I think uh, that's all for me. Thank you, Mr. Agus. Yeah. Uh, I want to know also from the from Dr. Meljon, what about you? What about your perspective? How can we discover the pattern of AI data if the threats is come from the inside that they don't have to block the, the security because they have to credential is another any another technique? For me, in my end, um, I normally ask uh, my students also know who are actually developing systems to really provide an uh, audit trail so that every time anybody comes in and use the system, so it might be possible to determine what they have been doing, um, the different transactions that they have been doing inside it. So that could be one thing that I normally tell them to, to really protect also what is inside and the data that is embedded to the systems. I think that would be the very basic thing that we normally do. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Are there another questions? Yes. Comments? Oh, raise hand. Roberto. Roberto, raise hand. Okay. Uh, can you speak, Roberto? Please. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, ask something uh, to Mr. Mr. Uh, Harrison. Uh, about uh, you tell uh, in the material about the relation database. It's like a graph database. Uh, uh, the machine can be uh, processed to the graph database. Uh, what you should uh, be solve this because uh, when 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 my internship, uh, we uh, I I learn uh, something in the graph database, so I can uh, analyze the data from graph database. So then uh, the second uh, uh, the second question is. Uh, in in image learning, uh, we have uh, the the new data uh, like uh, SAC and dolphin, but uh, sometimes uh, the data is big uh, from from user. So uh, what 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 you solve uh, how to to deliver and uh, if the cost is expensive, uh, you need to call uh, you need uh, to cut or you need uh, optimize. Uh, beside that, uh, cyber in cyber in cyber, uh, you need uh, you need a good good in in defender. But if if you cut the loss, eh, cut cut the cost, uh, the cyber security is uh is is bad to to deliver the the data. Uh, so that uh, this is my question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberto. First is about the grabbing the data from the database, right? So, yeah. um, so you have access to your database, and you grab the data from your database. So it's like a data retrieval, right? Um. First of all, when we have the interface. When we store the data, we store the uh, sensitive data by encrypting it, right? Like for example, I believe you are familiar with PHP, right? So you build a website, the interface, by using PHP, right? PHP uh, language to develop a website. And then you store the data into the database, let's say MySQL database. 
and then you retrieve the data from the user. You can you allow the user to input the data, the name, the address, username, and password. And usually, this password we encrypt by using MD5 algorithm encryption to be stored into our database. Usually, without have to code anything, just mention in our code, and MySQL will. Uh, encrypt it automatically for the MD5. Okay, by analyzing the data, you cannot analyze the password or any any data that already been encrypted. Let's say you encrypt the numbers, the quantitative data. How you can analyze the data that already been encrypted? It is the the same with what we discussed with Dr. Meljan. So before you encrypt the data, make sure you can encrypt it. Okay. So that, that's why we have two keys for the encryption, public key and private key. Okay. So to analyze this data, we need to encrypt the, the sorry, we need to decrypt the encrypt the encrypted data. Otherwise, we cannot analyze it. That's the first from, from what I understand from your questions. The second is the big data cost, cut or optimize. If you ask me, of course, optimize. And if, let's say, your boss, your superior in your internship place said, I don't want to pay no more, just tell them if you don't want to pay, then you don't, you don't get the security. Everything has the price. Okay. So after you optimize it, you, 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 you make it more cheaper, but they still don't want to pay, then how we can do the such of things? Server, you have to pay. You have to rent. Okay. And then you as a programmer, come on. From what I know from so many programmers in Indonesia, sometimes they, uh, they code for a cup of tea. It is really, really wrong. So fail yourself. If they don't want to rise the cost, then just say, this is my maximum. Uh, you taught me about your internship place, right? And your internship place asks you to uh, optimize the cost, otherwise cut. Okay. So there is no feature if no good payment. Everything has its price. I am talking about the infrastructure. For example, you need a data warehouse infrastructure. But if your boss doesn't want to pay more for the server, then who will pay for the infrastructure? You? Of course not, right? So my answer is optimize it. After the optimization, they still don't want to add more cost to it, then just cut it. Thank you. Uh, from what I understand from your question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Roberto, is that uh, your question is, is uh, okay? I think it's, uh, it, uh, it's clear for me. Uh, thank you, Pa. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We are waiting for another questions. Uh, Huh? Or maybe Dr. Meljan has uh, any thoughts about the... <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I think is is enough. Uh, I think uh, there is no question. So uh, finally, uh, we have reached the end of this presentation. I would like to say thank you to all uh, presenters and the reactor for the great presentation to the audience for their active participants. Thank you for the attention. Back to the Mr. Alan. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, before we end this event, uh, let me award the certificate of appreciation, appreciation to the speaker, uh, to the discussion response, and to the operator. Operator can share the <coughs>
Okay, this is the certification of appreciation for Mr. Harrison Surbakti PhD for sharing his time and wisdom speaking during the University of Minano and University of Bayangkara Jakarta Raya International Collaborative Lecture Series in the team, 27 Collaborative Lecture Series Data Analytic for Cybersecurity by a Zoom uh, Terminal. Uh, Zoom webinar signed by Dr. Guillermo Torres and Professor Dr. Bambang Carsono, HHMM, as director and president of uh, each university. <laughs> and the second is, I would like to give the award for Mr. Melchon, uh, V. Abordi MS. CS for sharing his time with them and uh, as the rector during the University of Mindanao University of Bayern, uh, sorry, University of Mindanao and University of Bayangkara Jakarta Raya International Collaborative Text, uh, Lecture Series with the team when the seventh International Co Collaborative Lecture Series uh, data, data Analytic for Cybersecurity. Okay, and the last one for our moderator, <laughs> Certificate of Appreciation Award to Mr. Alji Pulizar Pratama Yusuf, SSI, MTNG, for sharing this time and with, uh, his time and wisdom as the moderator during the University of Mintana University. Uh, and University of Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya International Collaborative Lecture. And I think this is the end for this moment. The next, uh, okay. And I would like to say thank you very much and see you at other. Uh, and before we close, I, I'd like to uh, hear the closing. Remark by Dr. Randy F. Ardena, MSJ. Please, time is yours. Okay, Mr. Randy. Saya di admit. Hello, okay. Good afternoon. Can I be heard now? Okay, I can yes. hear you. Sure. Uh, well, hello everyone. Nice to see you all again virtually. So I would like to recognize the efforts of our Indonesian uh, counterpart, Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya who continue to be an excellent partners in making international collaborative lecture series a reality. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today at the conclusion of this event. This is the second international collaborative lecture series named Data Analytics for Cybersecurity between our university, UM of the Philippines and UBJ of Indonesia Cyber Lecture. And so we want to thank you for joining us, especially those other participants. A big thank you to the excellent keynote speaker, Dr. Harrison Sarbakti of Rangsit University International College. You have done an outstanding job. We appreciate your contribution of your valuable knowledge in sharing to us your best insights and practices and as well as experiences. Thanks also to our reactor, Professor Meljan Aborde of UM, for providing us a remarkable statement and might as well to all active participants joining us today during the discussion forum. So as you know all about, cybersecurity is one of the most challenging, rapidly evolving and strategically important public policy issues facing the world today. Applying data analytics in cyberspace strengthens our communities to do regular monitoring and analyzing network traffic data to help prevent and immediately identify malicious activity over the net. 
This in turn is providing tremendous opportunities for economic growth and prosperity that we must pro protect by confronting the risks and cyberspace at the same time. Cybersecurity is as much as of a human and social issue as it is a computer issue. The stronger our networks, the better we can all protect ourselves. I hope every one of you recognizes the tremendous economic and social benefits that come with an open, interoperable, secure, and reliable internet. I also wanted to say thank you to Professor Ajit Yunizar Patama Yusuf of UBJ for your stewardship for the excellent moderation of the discussion. I would like to point out that this conference is really a highlight of our commitment and our partnership to the broader public sector. We will continue to build and strengthen relationships with you. It is my hope that the professional and personal connections made between our universities for the second time will prove resilient and long lasting. So we jointly tackle the challenges of today and tomorrow. We really appreciate working with you. So thank you everyone and have a wonderful day. Okay, thank you, Professor Professor Randy, for the closing uh, remark. And I think this is the end of our event. And see you again at our at our next uh, international collaborative lecture series. See you again. Have a nice day.